So this is Vodcast 3 for Unit 3. And before you get to this point, you need to have a good understanding of the notes from the book that you should have taken already in 12.2, uh, pages 342 to 346. Gets into the types of fossils, what a fossil is. It gets into uh, what we understand about uh, the fossil record, what it is, uh, how fossils are made, and what information, most importantly, can we gather from looking at the fossils found in different rock layers. So if you have not taken those notes, you need to before you start on this. Other than that, uh, you're going to need a previous worksheet that we did in last podcast when we did the stratigraphy, putting these rock layers in order. You're also going to need the handout that looks like this with the different uh, index fossils and the geologic time scale off to the left. What we've been studying is just putting layers in order all right, based on the principles of stratigraphy. And in this cross section, we went through and we already know that the things on the bottom are the oldest and the things on top are the youngest based on the uh, principle of superposition or excuse me, the law of superposition. But what we don't know is really how old are these layers? And what we can do if there are certain fossils inside of layers, we can actually start to put an age or a date. And I'll get the difference here in a minute. Uh, an age or a date to uh, these rock layers. How far in the past did this rock layer form? The question that we want to start to answer. So let's just go ahead and jump into this. Again, we've been working on relative age. We're going to start working our way into something known as absolute age or absolute dating. And let's take a look at this rock layer right here. We know it's the third layer to form, but we really don't know much more than that. We do know that inside we have this fossil. All right. This fossil, if we compare it to the fossils over here, we know it's a trilobite. Uh, if you've played around with some of the fossils that I have up uh, at the front of the room, uh, you can see certain fossils like this known as trilobites. There are four on this page. And this one would be the one down here known as Oleanellus. I guess that's how you pronounce it. I'm really bad with these pronunciations. But Oleanellus, all right, that's this fossil right here. We can see it's in this rock layer. Now, what that does for us is as geologists study different rock layers around the earth, we know that they can start to correlate based on the patterns that they see, which layers here formed you know, relative uh, to other rock layers. And they start to put them in order into one giant column. Uh, you can't go to any one place and look for this column, but you can start to stitch things together. That was correlation. and. What we can do is we see certain fossils forming in only certain rock layers. All right. And what we can do is start to say, all right, if I see this fossil in a certain rock, I know uh, what time period it was. With a relative age, all right, what I can do here is I know from this little black line here that that's the um, uh, the range of this index fossil. It didn't live very long. It was found in just a very specific time period in Earth's history. And what we can do, any rock that has that, we can use this to co uh, correlate what time period of Earth's history it was. Uh, you could think of these time periods here. Uh, for example, this Oleanellus is found in the pre, excuse me, the Cambrian time period. That would be the relative age doesn't give us an exact date yet, all right, but it does tell us the time period, you know, what was going on. In the Cambrian period, all right, <clears throat> would be the relative age. Now, what geologists have done, though, is they've gone back to these rock layers and used certain techniques to actually begin to tell how far back in Earth's history did this occur. And that's called an absolute age. And we can see off to the left here um, in this column, it's got uh, numbers that correspond to how many millions of years into the past these different time periods were. And if we look at the Oleanellus uh, trilobite here, we can see that it formed in a very narrow range. So we could say that if you find a rock layer that has this Oleanellus trilobite in it, 
that has to have an absolute age of somewhere between 515 to 520 million years ago. And the MYA stands for millions of years ago. Uh, sometimes you see millions of years before present um, or just BP before present. Uh, but that's getting into how long ago it was from current time. Uh, let's try another one. So rock layer four, we know it has to be younger than that. Cannot be older than this rock layer. All right. Um, <clears throat> but if we look at this fossil, this fossil uh, is another trilobite. And trilobites, just another tidbit of information, the closest relatives we have to trilobites now are horseshoe crabs. Have you ever seen horseshoe crab? Um, you know, they're kind of cool looking. But these are the most distant, uh, or these are the closest relatives we have. And we can see here, Phacops is this, the name of this trilobite. And it's got a little bit larger range. So instead of just saying one single time period, certain uh, index fossils can span multiple time periods. And we've got to the late Silurian upwards to the late or end of the Devonian. All right. And if we look at the absolute age, all right, that corresponds to somewhere between 359 to 425 million years ago. That's how old this rock layer could be. Now, interesting thing to point out. Even if we took the oldest of the Cambrian, or excuse me, oldest, oldest of the top layer and the youngest of the uh, third layer here, that still means there are millions of years in between when the uh, rock layers were put down. So in between this rock layer and in between this rock layer, there may be millions of years of Earth's history that wasn't even recorded. Now let's look at these bottom two rock layers. What can we say about these two? Again, the law of superposition states that they must be older, but we can't really put an age because I don't see any fossils in there. All right, you don't always see fossils in the rock layers. So all we really can say about these two things is that it had to happen before the Oleanellus uh, trilobite layer formed. So it could be early Cambrian or into the pre-Cambrian time period. Uh, that corresponds to probably more than 520 million years. It could be even billions of years into the past. We just don't know because I don't see any fossils in there to indicate it. Same thing with this one below that. They may have formed in rapid succession right before that, or it could have been millions or billions of years before layer three. So let's take a look at this one and try to identify uh, as many of the relative and absolute ages. Again, the relative age is describing the time periods or era that it's in. Uh, the difference between those we'll uh, get into in one of the last vodcasts. And <clears throat> the absolute age, giving me a number or a range of numbers in which this could have formed in. So down here would be the earliest one. We know that from law of superposition again, that it got to be the oldest because it's towards the bottom, um, at least the oldest with fossils in it. And that looks like the flexi calamine or calamine. <clears throat> uh, we know that it's got a very small range again. We get that range from just going out into the field, digging up these fossils, and just identifying what kind of rock layers we find in them. And we can correlate these rock layers together to get this ordering. All right. And flex calamine is probably mid to late Ordovician, all right, with a corresponding absolute age of anywhere between 444 to 450 million years ago. Uh, rock layer three, uh, we're back to the uh, Phacops. We just went through that last uh, slide. So that'd be the late Silurian to the late Devonian. And that's 425 to 395 million years ago. Um, so we get this little bivalve here and we can see it's got a very large range. Uh, so the best we can do with this uh, layer of limestone that it's found in is that it's found in the late Silurian to late Permian uh, anywhere from 255 to 425 million years ago. Last layer up on top, uh, we can see that this little fern up here or leaf is between the mid to late Paleogene. So it's relatively recent between 34 and 23 million years ago. Now, we can see that there's this unconformity, this angular conformity in here. We could put a date to that if we wanted to. Um, we know that angular unconformities from last vodcast form when mountains tend to form. Uh, that 
crashing of, say, two continents maybe, pushing the land up in between, then being weathered and eroded away down, um, causing these rock layers to be tilted and then worn off, and then layers on top. So that takes that process takes millions of years. That could have been, who knows, uh, maybe a dozen rock layers above this layer four. We just don't know. They're all missing. But this does support that uh, there's been a large gap of time in between this rock layer and the above. And finally, again, you could also put a range and date if you wanted to. This had to happen pre or uh, late Ordovician, pre 450 million years ago or so. Um, I'm going to go through one more example real quick. <clears throat> Since each one of those only had one fossil in it, what happens if you have more than one fossil in it? That's really where your homework is going to lead you. If you have more than one fossil in it, how does that uh, help or hurt us? Normally, we don't just find uh, one fossil in a rock layer. We find dozens. Right? And in your book, it gives you a pretty good uh, description of this on page 345 if you want to go there and look. <clears throat> But when you see different fossils in different rock layers, that uh, can even or narrow down the range even more. So, for example, let's just say you find a uh, shark and this uh, this bivalve, um, Eucro uh, sporifer or whatever it's called. <clears throat> the shark uh, is obviously around today, and the first fossil evidence that we find of of modern day sharks is in the late Devonian, which is about 365 million years ago. These things have been around for a very long time. So just because you find a shark tooth or a shark, you know, whatever, doesn't mean a whole lot. It has a huge range. But if in the same layer that you find that shark tooth, all right, uh, you find this uh, mucrosporifera uh, uh, fossil, since they overlap, they only overlap in a very small area. That gives us a very narrow range on when that rock layer containing both of those fossils could have formed. All right, so it'd be the late Devonian only, and somewhere between maybe 370 to 359 million years ago. All right, so that's using index fossils to put an actual age to the, um, to the rock that they're found in. You're going to identify the fossils that uh, are in the homework, and then give a relative and absolute date to that rock layer.